almost every school leader that I work with tells me that it's important that they reflect on how they're working. They have a firm belief that reflective practitioners and school leaders, particularly when it comes to leading the culture of a school, are more effective than school leaders who kind of just get busy and get about their work and never stop to think about the impact of the way that they're working from both a positive and a negative perspective. So we kind of have this collective and broad agreement that reflection is important. I want to throw a rock at that, if I may, for just a moment, because I don't think reflecting just willy-nilly is good enough. I think that what we need to do to be genuinely reflective is to reflect upon something. Think about when you got up this morning and you got yourself ready for work. If you, for instance, shaved or put on makeup or did your hair or put some nice clothes on, I bet you didn't look at your reflection against a wall because to reflect against nothing will not give you the result that you're looking for. We reflect on something. We use a mirror. We put something up to ourselves and we say, how am I going in that reflection? And we make the adjustments that we need to. The reflection drives action. And that's what I think we need to do. There's a temptation for me as a reflective practitioner, for instance, when I run a workshop with a school, to get to leave the workshop, to sit out in my car, and I have a 10 second rule that says I must reflect. Uh, but it's no good for me to get out to my car and say, okay, how'd I go today? and to have some wild, random reflection that really only results in me, if I'm feeling positive, going, I was pretty good, putting my right foot down and driving off. Um, and you know what? We can sometimes, because of the randomness of that reflection, reflect negatively. We might say, I was terrible, and then I drive off. Neither the positive nor the negative random reflection leads to action. It's just judgment. So what we need to do is to start to design for ourselves models that allow us to see the way that we're reflecting. We need to design models, for instance, a three-sphered Venn diagram that allows you to think about the three things that are most important for you. For me as a cultural leader, I put three clear, clear dimensions on that Venn diagram. Number one was anecdote. Am I catering effectively for the stories that my people tell? Am I taking my community into account by listening to what they're saying about who they are? Evidence. Am I able to prove the effectiveness of the decision making that I undertake? And intuition. And intuition for me is about using great knowledge to challenge convention and tradition. And if I thought that I was acting in good balance between those three Venn diagrams, I might say, oh, I kind of forgot that intuition one this week. I kind of got busy and forgot about really thinking about whether that was a good thing to do or whether it was just a habit of practice. Then I can actually go, I'm going to bring some of that in next week. There's the action. That's the action that we're looking for from reflection. Reflection that needs to judgment will always drag you down eventually because eventually you'll get frustrated by the lack of action. But strong reflection, driven by a model that's designed by you to impact your school and your work and to help you fulfill your purpose, will lead you to action and that progress will provide you with all the motivation you need to be a successful leader of school culture.